Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Beautiful Bets, a podcast from Vegas Insider. My name's Andrew Beasley and I'm here to discuss the World Cup and all the things that are going on as we approach the knockout phase with Eric Winalda. And Eric correctly predicted that the USA would win 1-0 against Iran and uh, advance to the round of 16. So you must have been very pleased with how that all played out, Eric. Yeah, except for my heart rate and uh, <laughs> a trip to the doctor. I mean, uh, our tactics at the end of the game were, were certainly um, um, as cautious as you could be. Uh, we, we wanted to make sure that we secured the, uh, the points and, and the victory. But there's some scary moments there at the end. But it's, it's nice to be right, especially when it's your, your home team. Um, I think I had England uh, blowing out uh, uh, yep. Wales. And, and I think that, that was also the case. It could have been worse. But, but still a good, a good week. Uh, it's going to even be a crazier next couple of days with some of the results coming through. So let's talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I didn't see the whole game Iran USA, but I thought USA really good in the first half. It appeared to get behind Iran far more than I think either of us expected. You know, we spoke last time about how strong they are defensively, both them and, and Carlos Kiros, their manager. Right. Um, obviously, we talk about Christian Pulisic quite a lot um, on this program. He assisted the goal against Wales. He scored the crucial goal against Iran. I mean. He's now being linked with Manchester United as well as Arsenal. Um, you've you mentioned Newcastle in the past. I mean, do you think he's increasing his value in this World Cup? And, and where do you think, um, you know, if he were to go to one of those clubs or any other, I mean, where do you think he should go? Well, I mean, it is interesting to, uh, to hear all the chatter. I mean, Arsenal is, is, is a destination that I, I'm not entirely sure if that's a good fit. I, I really like the idea of Manchester United. Um, I, I just do. I, I think that, um, you know, with with... The fact that Ronaldo will be leaving um, and there will be a new vibe, I would say, with that team. It's hard to say, though, Andrew, if, he's, if his value has gone up. I think he's probably hitting right where it's expected. And it wouldn't be a mystery to anybody or a surprise, I should say, if Chelsea loaned out a, a very talented midfielder. They've done it in the past. They did it with the likes of De Bruyne, for, for example. So um, it's a good way to save some money, get get him on somebody else's books. Um, but it, it's not a clear cut, uh, straight up move somewhere else. Uh, if he does happen to go on loan under the circumstances, that might be the case uh, that that might make the most sense. Um, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, Graham Potter doesn't doesn't necessarily like him. Uh, we just saw, uh, you know, some other Chelsea players have, have some very good games. Uh, and score some goals, particularly with uh, Morocco. So we'll see how that all plays out. But mm -hmm. look, I, I think his future has, has been kind of uh, talked about and up in the air uh, for a good six months now. Um, you know, the, the injury that he the, sustained, it, it looks like he's going to be OK. Uh, it was just a, a pelvic uh, contusion is what they're calling it. He didn't get kicked in the balls. That he, that, those are his words, not mine, that he wanted to clear that up. Uh, but he certainly put him on the line. I'll tell you that on that play. And, and it, it, it's a proud moment for, for our team to, to have a, a guy that we put so much, um, uh, so much pressure on to, to deliver, as you said, the assist and now the goal. And, and now we're looking at a very tough opponent in the Netherlands, but not as tough as they used to be. No, I'm inclined to agree. I think um, USA have possibly got a better chance than um, than what the bookmakers think um, on Saturday. With regards to the team, I mean, obviously they've kept a fairly consistent lineup. I see nine players have started every game so far. Um, probably the big change for the Iran game was uh, Cameron Carter Vickers coming in for Walker Zimmerman. I right. mean, how do you think? How do you think he did? And uh, do you think he'll retain his place for the for the Netherlands game? Well, I. You know, it really was uh, an interesting uh, substitution with um, you know, Walker Zimmerman had some nervous moments, clearly. I mean, the the, the penalty kick um, was was ill-advised. It, it was a challenge that we could all look at and say maybe he was naive, maybe he just was fired up. Either way, it's made all of us nervous. Uh, Carter Vickers just kind of really calmed that back line. Uh, he is a calm guy. Um, he doesn't really try to dazzle anybody at all I and mean, playing at Celtic and being their captain, his job is to calm people down. It is to, to, to be that kind of influence. Certainly had that on that back line for us. Um, it'll be interesting to see who we go with uh, against the likes of the Netherlands because of the, the you know, the aerial battles that we, we certainly need to win. Carter Vickers is not the biggest guy. Uh, Zimmerman's a bit taller, but we saw how those tactics changed at the end of the game where when we decided to go with that flat five, 
um, you know, brought Shaq Moore into the game, Zimmerman, and leaving Reem and Carter Vickers on the field at the same time. So, um, you know, some of those performances were very good, but that was that was really what the game called for. Um, I, I think he'll be out on the field again. I, I think his physicality was was uh, was certainly on display against the likes of Mediterremi, who I have a very very high opinion of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we've talked about him every time Iran have come up, but um, he certainly does have a good record this season. The, the one other player perhaps stands out in a way is um, Brendan Aronson, and that he's featured in all three games, but he hasn't started any of them. Why do you think that is? I mean, do you think why do you think his minutes have been limited, and, and do you think there's any chance he comes into the team to start at any point? Well, I mean, Aronson and Reyna, a lot of talk about Reyna as well, but you know, I think the the question it has to be asked. Do you want those guys on the field at the beginning of the game or at the end of the game? And, and that has been clearly answered by Greg Berhalter that he he thinks that the latter parts of the game, when when things start to get um, and people get start to get tired, uh, he brings in an energy. Uh, so I, I think he's I don't, I'm certainly don't think he's relishing in this uh, reserve um, status, but I, I do think his inclusion will be necessary. Uh, in this next game, I, I do like him coming off the bench. I'd also, I've been very vocal about the idea of Reyna is not getting enough minutes. Um, and, you know, there was some speculation that he possibly did have um, an injury coming in. He's cleared that up as to say, no, I'm not hurt uh, and I, um, I'm i ready to go. Uh, so that caused a little bit of a problem with the, with the group. But I think this is a team that's well poised to, to, to do well in this competition. And the Netherlands is a perfect perfect opponent for us right now so we'll see how it all plays out but i'm i'm you know clearly like everybody else i'm i'm sitting here waiting you know watching the clock you know, waiting for saturday because it's going to be a big day yeah it's a 10 a.m kickoff eastern time on saturday um if we look at the odds the netherlands are available at plus 100 plus 230 for the draw and plus 340 for a usa win in 90 minutes to qualify uh, to ultimately get through the tie netherlands are minus 205 USA plus 185, which gives it roughly 66% Netherlands, 34% USA. Um, the teams have never actually met competitively. All the previous games between them have been friendlies. Um, I saw that you actually played in one in 1998. Yeah. Um, and uh, the USA did win the last meeting 4-3 uh, in 2015. I don't think there's going to be as many goals as that this no. time around. Um, USA's last six games, they've scored three, conceded four um, and only had two, four, one against at the World Cup. Very few goals in their games recently. Netherlands are unbeaten since June of last year. 13 wins and five draws in their last 18. Perhaps most interestingly, neither, neither team has been behind yet at the World Cup. They haven't, all, they haven't won all their games, but they haven't gone behind. Um, under 2.5 goals is available at uh, minus 160. Under 1.5 is plus 190. And, and I don't think that's out of the question um, low scoring game i think double chance of usa or a draw which is minus 115 looks good to me but how do you see it playing out i think we're going to keep things exactly the way they've been going for us i i, I think this is a a, a challenge gakpo is, is obviously a, a, a great forward he's six foot four he has uh um you know, obviously the, the the physicality will be there but we've just dealt with the likes of harry kane so i i, I think that we have a blueprint of how we want to uh, play. I, I don't know where Memphis Depay comes into this, uh, and and we're certainly going to have to keep uh, an eye on him. But I, this is a team, Andrew, that they, they only managed two shots against Ecuador. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's it's not like they're really overpowering or overwhelming anybody. I, if anything, we we're very underwhelmed with this uh, with this team. I you know I have Dutch heritage, so I've I've been going back and forth with. Uh, some of some of the the media uh, on that side of it, and you know they're saying the same thing. It's not Van Persie and, and Schneider and Aaron Robin anymore. Um, it's new names. It's it's young kids. Uh, you know, Freddie De Jong is a, is a great uh, midfielder. Klassen is also a classy player, but they don't scare us. There's nothing scary about this team defensively. You know, obviously Virgil, Virgil Van Dijk, uh, Ake, and uh, De Ligt, uh, Timber, very good defenders. But still, it's kind of flipped. It used to be the offensive prowess of, of, of Netherlands was all we talked about. And then it was a bunch of defenders scattered around um, the first division in, in Holland. And we always asked the question, well, don't they have better defenders? Well, now they do. So this sets up to be a very defensive game. Um, I, I've got the United States winning this game. 
uh, mainly because I just feel that this this Dutch side is is they've shown that they can be susceptible, uh, and we have proven that we can play defense. We have not been scored on in the run of play yet, uh, and we have a goalkeeper that's a hell of a lot better than people thought. I do want to say I, I give Greg Berhalter a ton of credit for making that decision. Um, that was a tough one. Zach Steffen was our number one for a long time. It had to be that had to be gut wrenching and 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 heartbreaking for Zach to to be left out of this team and now to watch it from home. But Matt Turner has been very good. You know, we talk about Pulisic moving. Uh, I, I don't think he's he should be happy as the number two at Arsenal anymore. There's a, a bunch of teams that could use his services. So let's watch out for that as well. But I got one nil. I I, I do think the Americans win. Uh, we were hoping yesterday that Group C would be a little bit more different, uh, you know, with the, the possibility of Poland uh, winning the group, and that would have created a, a great pathway for the U.S. But it, if if this, it looks as if if you beat the Netherlands, you're going to run into Messi. So uh, the other word is what this might get, or the other version of Messi. This this tournament could get Messi in a hurry for us. But um, I, I still think in this particular game, low scoring affair. Not a lot of chances. Very pragmatic, uh, with the U.S. coming up on uh, coming out on top. Yeah, we've mentioned Gakpo there. I mean, he has scored three goals, but he's only taken four shots, which um, I guess is obviously not pretty good sustainable return. in the long term. <laughs> and uh, again, Klassen, he scored one. He's got two assists, so I guess he's the other guy to 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 look out for, as you mentioned. But um, yeah, you've said USA to win one nil. USA is available at plus one thousand. I guess that's probably the most likely scoreline for a. USA win if we're thinking low scoring. Um, next is USA 2-1 at 1,600. But um, yeah, maybe 1-0 sounds about right. And uh, if we move on to the, I suppose the other game we obviously need to talk about is England against Senegal. Um, England-Wales, I thought was going to be maybe 2-0. You said 3-4-5. I think for quite a while, my, my prediction was looking good. And then England scored twice in a minute. And from there, I think it probably could have been 3-4-5. But um, they settled for one more after that. Um, no real sort of surprise there. Senegal, um, we weren't sure they were going to beat Ecuador, but they did, 2-1. Um, two teams here who have uh, scored a couple of times each from set pieces. That could well come into play on on uh, Sunday when they meet. It's a 2 p.m. Eastern kickoff on Sunday. England are minus 182 to win in 90 minutes. The draw is 310 and Senegal are plus 650. Uh, teams have never met before. England haven't lost to an African side. It's sort of one of those trivia things that does the rounds whenever they play um, a team from Africa. Um, I guess concern for Senegal, only one clean sheet in the last six. And with the attacking options that England have, you'd have to think that's a, that's going to be a problem for them. I think England probably win to nil. That's available at plus 115. But how do you see this one going? I think they'll concede one goal. I think the speed of this Senegal, Senegal side is, is is going to be a problem. They're very well coached. Cissé is a very good coach. Uh, I love it. I love his outfit too on the sidelines. You and I chose cozy uh, gray sweaters today. Uh, <laughs> he, he just wears the, uh, the just the standard warm up suit. But uh, yeah, look, Senegal proved that they can run with 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 uh, with anybody. I thought they it was a great game against. Um, uh, the Netherlands, uh, they did allow it to open up quite a bit. The Netherlands um, were able to get them late, if you will. Um, and I, I think I think in that game, there were several just glimpses of, of what they're capable of. They've grown into this competition. Um, the last game against Ecuador, fortunate with the, with the penalty kick, uh, but an immediate response. That's what impressed me the most is, is they, you know, once Ecuador equalized, they were they, they they scored literally a minute after. So um, England should be wary of that. They, you know, they, I don't see England losing this game, but I do think that both teams will score, uh, and I, I think it will be somewhere along the lines of three to one, um, very similar to um, you know other results that we've seen uh, in the past. These two have never met, as you mentioned, but with African teams, it it, it seems to to me that on set pieces and set uh, set plays. They, they let themselves down at times, and England is certainly a, a squad that will be able to capitalize on that. So 3-1 England, um, and, and you know they, they know what their future holds. It looks like they're going to run into France, which could end it pretty quickly. But uh, I still see them coming out of this one unscathed. Yeah, um, England 3-1 is available at plus 1,600, um, or England and both teams to score. A bit of a safer bet is available at plus 350. 
Um, you mentioned there about France, um, who will face most likely face the winners of the England Senegal match there against Poland, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time kickoff on Sunday. Um, France, very strong favourites, as you would expect, minus 330 to win in 90 minutes. Uh, it's plus 475 for the draw currently, and it's plus 1200 for a Poland win. Um, now, I didn't see uh, France's loss to Tunisia, but they um, Didier Deschamps, I think he only kept three of his starting 11, made, made a lot of changes in that one. I did see Poland against Argentina and thought they were pretty poor. The amount of chances Argentina had, they, they could have lost a lot more. So um, it has to be a, a sort of straightforward France win in that one for me. But uh, you see any, anything different? No, it's a blowout, really. Um, you know, they, I, I, it could have been a lot worse for Poland. Poland does not deserve to be in this competition without their goalkeeper, Chesney. I mean, he's, he's, if you saw the double save, um, you know, that was one you know, against Saudi Arabia. And then, of course, to, to stifle Messi with a wonderful save. I don't, I don't think it was a penalty kick um, to start. I apologize for the dog. Uh, apparently the dog agrees. But um, I think what... When you look at Poland um, the way I am right now, they, it, they, they look tired. They don't look the part. They, 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 their tactics are to, to counter with Lewandowski. Now, Lewandowski can't run anymore. He can hold it up, but if you don't help him, it's just going to be another wave. So I'm, I've got this one high, actually. I think this will be a pretty ugly um, – they'll, they'll break the bubble pretty, soon, or pretty early in the game. i got to go on 4-5. I, I, I do think this will go really high. And the reason I say that – you know, looking at Mbappe, he only got about 30 minutes. Um, we came in in the 62nd minute. But the, the truth is, in this World Cup, when you come in with 30 minutes to go, you're actually playing 40 because there's going to be more minutes. Um, Griezmann yeah. did get a goal that was disallowed, but they rested everybody. This is a well-rested side, and that's the last thing in the world that Poland needed to hear because uh, they put a lot into that Argentine game. And, and so this is going to be... This will be a, um, an honorable dismissal. Uh, I'm sure they'll all shake hands and, and, and try to smile their way as they get back to the planes. But uh, I, I think it would not be a surprise to see them lose four, possibly even five nothing. Well, you can get plus 650 for France to win by four or more goals. Um, if you agree That's with Eric. With. If you agree on Eric on that one. I think France winning to nil as well. Uh, minus 115 is a safer bet, obviously. But as you say, they're, they're not really getting any service to Lewandowski or not the sort of service that he would um, thrive on. I think it could play out very similar to the Argentina game in that they're sort of just defending pretty much the whole time. Um, the other game that we can be certain about at this point, as we record on uh, sort of Thursday afternoon in the UK, uh, we've got Argentina versus Australia, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. Again, very one-sided, even more so with the, with the bookmakers, as you'd probably expect. Argentina minus 500 to win in 90. The draw is plus 650, and you can get 1,800, plus 1,800 for an Australia win. In the qualified market, Argentina are minus 1,200. That equates to roughly 92% likelihood of going through. And if you look at the stats from the group stage, the shots, the expected goals, these sorts of things, Australia were worse than Saudi Arabia. So you could argue it'd be a bigger shock if Australia beat um, Argentina than Saudi Arabia doing it. Haven't met since 2007. Last time they did, um, Argentina won 1-0 with a messy assist, even though it was 15 years ago. He's been around that long. I'm sure he'll be involved again. And um, I can only see a heavy win for Argentina. And I'd, I'd be surprised if you differ. Well, I mean, there's there's one thing we need to consider here, and we can blame it on the goose. Uh, goose Hiddick is is a part of this setup, uh, and you know, I I know the man personally. I know what what he represents. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have a chance to work with him and had dinner with him for about a month straight, and just just listening to the way he he views the game, what he has done is he has just instilled a belief um, through their manager as an assistant coach, but just as a, a, a glorified consultant. But he's done this before, Andrew. We've seen him do this uh, time and time again. He he was uh, originally brought in as, as a Ch Chelsea consultant just to kind of smooth the waters over. But he's done this with South Korea. He's done this with Russia. And he's done this with Australia. You start mentioning those 15 years ago. There's one guy that, that was responsible for, for, for that kind of a setup and losing a game 1-0 to a very talented team. And that's Gus Hiddick. And he's still there. So it's just like Messi is still there. But the Goose is still around as well. So... I would tend to think that this is going to be an, an unbelievable defensive uh, effort from this Australian team. They'll lose, but it will not be as high as we think. It will not be a, a high-scoring affair. 
you know, I, we can even liken this to what happened years ago with Iran, with Carlos Kiroz. It took a late moment of magic from Messi um, to break down that team. It's going to be more of that. It's it's very hard to, to break down the low block if they marry themselves to it, and and they're and they're just going to make your, your your day miserable. Now, Matt Lefke got the goal. Uh, Matthew Lefke got got the goal the other day. I, I thought it was a great strike. Uh, I've known him for years. I've seen this guy play from his, ga- his days at Hertha Berlin and Frankfurt and Munchen Gladbach. So he has a German pedigree. He's 31 years old. He's not going to be the guy that's going to run past anybody on that back line for Argentina, but he might get a foul. He might get fouled a lot because Otamendi doesn't care. He's just one of those guys that will kick you first and ask questions later. So it, it won't be a, a counterattack. It'll be a counter to a foul, to a slow down, catch your breath, and then get ready to defend again. And that really will be the tactic. And I, I think they they understand the situation they're in. They're going against a great team. Yes, some people could say, well, they had their slip up against Saudi Arabia. Could it happen again? Sorry, no, it's not going to happen again. But this is not going to be a high scoring affair. This is going to be get our goal and then let's try and coast to the end, knowing that uh, Australia really doesn't have the weapons uh, to, to get after him. They do have Timmy Cahill up there taking notes, but he can't play anymore. He is retired. If they had Tim Cahill, I might have a different uh, opinion, but they don't. They, they, they have a team that simply doesn't uh, – their striker is hurt. Uh, they, it's a makeshift uh, forward line, to say the least. Um, one, one or two nothing. That's it. And then it's over, rest, and get on to the next game. Yeah, Argentina 2-0 is the shortest price correct score at plus 450. Um, Argentina 1-0 is available at plus 600. Um, If you don't want to specify quite so much, you can get Argentina to win by one goal at plus 300 or by two goals at plus 275. I like that. I I like that bet. I I, I know that sounds a little wild, but there's reasons behind it. And when you you really break down both teams, break down – um, you know, what those matchups look like. And we've seen uh, Argentina struggle before. Um, they'll, they're not, I'm not necessarily saying they're going to struggle. They're going to get some chances, but they're going to be half chances. They're not going to be the kind that, uh, that that you would expect to get three, four goals out of. I mean, even Messi is looking a little bit, a little bit short, uh, s- slow at times. Uh, you know, the, the, the swing and the miss yesterday was really telling to me. Those are tired legs. He never comes off the field. He just, they never give him a rest. And, and, and I'll never understand that because sometimes you, he needs one. But um, I'll, I'll go low. I'll go low. I think that that, and, and that's, that's my tribute to the genius, uh, Gus Hiddick, who is still alive, uh, well, well and kicking over in Australia. He does, I know, I, I'll say this, the man loves to live on the water. He has a place in Cannes, a, a home in Amsterdam. It does not surprise me that he, he, he would live somewhere in a place like Australia, possibly Sydney, possibly right on the water, uh, having the black coffee, which he, he, he refuses to put sugar in it. So uh, I, I know the guy and I know what uh, what he's capable of. So that's why my belief system is a little higher than most when it comes to Australia right now. Well, you can get plus 110 even for under 2.5 goals. So uh, obviously, if they've got uh, his defensive know-how behind them, then uh, maybe it could be something like that. We'll have to wait and see. Um, those are the ties that we can be certain about at this point. Um, we're recording this shortly ahead of the games for uh, Spain, Japan and Germany, Costa Rica. I think we both expect Spain and, and Germany to get through those games. Assuming that they do, um, we would have Spain against Croatia and Morocco against Germany as two ties in the next round. Um Morocco versus Germany. Well, actually, they're both probably quite interesting ties. I think they're probably yeah. both quite hard to call. I think um, you know Croatia have proven quite hard to break down, and obviously Morocco have, have taken quite a few people by surprise. But um, obviously, we're sort of talking in general terms because they're not confirmed. But I mean, it, right. what would you take from those potential games? Well, I mean, it is potential, but I, I do think the Germans will get through. We'll see another explosion. I'd hate to be Kaylor Navas today. Uh, it, it, it might be four, five, or six. They might get into the double figures of goals against in this uh, competition after losing to Spain 7-0. The Germans are weird, man. This is a weird team. I, I, I You know, you look at that back line, Schlatterbeck and and Raum, they, they're, they're not Mats Hummels anymore, right? But they still have Neuer. So he saved the day on a couple of occasions with Spain already. And they've had their slip up. They had their blip. They, they, they lost the game to Japan. And then again, they had 26 shots in that game, Andrew. So it, it's not like they're not, they're failing to get behind that back line. 
um, the Germans are building, they, and and that's strange. You know, the, t- this the way they started it was threw everybody off. Expect an explosion today, and then they and if they do run into Morocco, they will beat them. That, that that's just the German way. Um, we we were thinking of of all the the, the you know the different outcomes, uh, but they all include Germany. Germany will be a part of, of of this thing going forward, as will Spain. I think I think they falter today. I mean, Japan falters today. They, Japan's got to be the one kicking themselves the most. I mean, it, it, honestly, they 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 did kind of what um, France did yesterday. But France had the ability to do that. They already had points in the bag. Japan got ahead of themselves. They saw the big score line, 7-0. They thought they could rest their guys. They put up a, a, a decent side, um, uh, to, but they really made a mess of it. So they're up against the wall today against Spain, and I don't think they'll, they have enough to beat them. But uh, the other one, Spain, Croatia, right? So that, that's mm-hmm. that's a game where all of the decisions that, that – um, Luis Enrique has made up to this point has been building a team that has that is young, is vibrant. Uh, they, they score obviously. They everybody got in on the act in the first game. Um, a very different game against Germany as expected, but still, man, I'll tell you, Pedri and Gavi, they, just kind of kind of sitting in there with Busquets, who who doesn't really move a lot. My son was asking me today. He said it's a four three three. Why are they calling it a four one two? I don't understand. <laughs> I, I and I said, well. When you got a guy like Busquets who doesn't move at all, whose just job is to find the people who are moving, he he we have to put the one in there, son. That's the way it works. So, uh, how long Busquets lasts in this competition is the same question as how long Modric lasts. So, very cool game. I mean, just just recognizing uh, a couple of players coming to the end of their international careers, um, but still it can still play at a very high level. I like. Spain, though, I, I like them a lot. And I think um, I think what will happen with Spain is the, 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 the motor of that team uh, and the offensive weapons will eventually uh, be the difference. So uh, Croatia will probably bow out. Uh, I've got that as a, a, a decent game and a 2-1. Uh, I, but I, I see both teams scoring uh, and the old guys getting their way and probably uh, Perisic or someone like, of like that nature. Uh, I did see Mandzukic on the bench today, which I thought was fantastic because I was such a big fan of his. But uh, Croatia, great team, just not going to be enough to beat this Spanish side. No, I mean, obviously, I've, we don't have any odds for that yet because it's not confirmed. But I think I think you're probably right. Spain winning a sort of narrow game. Um, whoever wins that most likely uh, goes on to face Brazil, we would think. Um, they play tomorrow, as do Serbia and Switzerland. We actually talked about that in our last episode. We sort of thought... Switzerland might um, get through. But when we last recorded, Portugal hadn't played Uruguay because we were recording um, the same day as that game. Portugal won that one 2 0. So, really, the big game in that group tomorrow is Ghana against Uruguay. Obviously, a lot of history from 2010, Luis Suarez handball on the line, and, and ultimately Uruguay went through at, at Ghana's expense. But I think it's quite an interesting game because it's a real clash because you've got Ghana who've had a 3 2 win and a 3 2 loss. And you've obviously had Uruguay, who played very tight games. They had a nil-nil um, and then a, a two-nil loss to Portugal. So I think it's quite a tough game to call, um, seeing who goes through. A point for Ghana would probably be enough to to get them through into the knockout stage. But but how do you see that one going? And, and, yeah, I'm really perplexed by the way that, that Uruguay has played up to this point. They played so defensive, and it's been um, unfortunate. Cavani is, and he's he's not the the, the youngest that you could have. And Suarez certainly will, will want to play in this game, but Menunez really hasn't done much, has he? he he's been more of the, uh, the, he's fast. He'll beat a couple guys. He might get you a corner, but he's not getting a lot of shots on target. So I blame that mainly on that, that, that defensive setup. They, they've really kind of bunkered in and expected more, I think on the offensive side on the break, but they just don't have the legs for it. So this is a different game. Ghana's going to throw – they don't know any better. They're going to throw everything forward, uh, try to get their goals, and it might open up. So um, they've, they've played to zero. They've kept things tight. But I, I think Ghana will be the one who, who, who basically dictates that conversation. Uh, and it's really up to Uruguay whether they want to commit numbers forward or not. And I don't think they will, uh, but I do think they will find uh, the back of the net several times. This, this will be a coming out party to a certain extent for – 
Uruguay to make the group interesting. So I've got them, I've got Uruguay winning this game, but I also thought Uruguay was going to take out Portugal with everything going on with uh, Ronaldo, whether he scores or doesn't score or thinks he scored <laughs> or tries to convince people that he scored uh, in the last game. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, I, I think that, that they're actually turning the corner and um, you know, with Bruno Fernandes is uh, performances that they really they were a lot better than i think we thought they were going to be we, we knew how talented they were we just thought they were a team in turmoil turmoil they aren't um uruguay is um is is got a chance here so i've, I've got them because it's an you know because it's it's we're not in the uh the knockout phases yet if it was a knockout game i'd probably have it one to one uh but because of um the the situation and the defensive effort that uruguay's uh, put up that might be the case again it, it, I just don't think they have enough weapons so I'm going 1-1 um, thinking that that uh, it doesn't need to be decided thank god in penalty kicks again so uh, that that was uh, quite an affair I, I love Suarez's comments it's not my fault I didn't miss I, I was just the guy who who blocked it with my hands he's he's always he's always going to have something up his sleeve literally so we'll, we'll see how that one plays I got it 1-1 though 1-1 the final score yeah, one one is available at plus seven hundred. Um, a draw of any type is plus two ninety. Uruguay are strong favourites, minus one thirty, and, and Ghana are plus four hundred. I, you know, seems like quite a long price to me considering how well they've been attacking. But I guess their defence may offer Uruguay, you know, chances that they've not had necessarily in the other games. But um, yeah, I think that's that's going to be an interesting watch. But how it goes is uh, is very hard to call. Um, and I think that's probably about all we can talk about now because the other games aren't um, yet agreed. I mean, the, the, the bookies seem to think it'll be Brazil versus Uruguay and Portugal versus Switzerland in the last 16. And I think uh, probably Brazil and Portugal to, to get through those. But um, we'll obviously have to wait and see the, the outcome of the remaining games. So I suppose before we go, we should probably finish with a final word on the USA. You seem confident that they can do it. Um, there's been a lot of talk about Tyler Adams Claude, it's on and off the pitch we've talked about it ourselves and, and elsewhere as well do you think he's going to be set for a move in the January or the summer I mean is, is, a, is a bigger team going to come in for him or, or do you think he's better off staying where he is well I, I love where he is <clears throat> excuse me I, I love where he is right now and I think I've said that I, I think he should stay right where he is he's not ready for a big move I've, I've changed my 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 attitude towards that completely. Sometimes a world cup really brings out the character and, and, and shows you what the, what, what the man is all about. Uh, he has been a leader. He, and if you've seen his press conferences, they've been fairly phenomenal too. dealing, dealing with a, a group of, 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 and in the media trying to politicize this game, nothing phased him, nothing phased him. I mean, we've been privy to some of those, uh, Videos from inside the, the the locker room of how he talks to his teammates, how he consoles them, how he in, engages with them, inspires them, motivates them. You know, he, he's our Conte. That that's who he is. Uh, he, he's not the biggest guy, biggest stature, but uh, what a player! What what an he. I don't think I should apologize. I just didn't think he was ready. But sometimes you're pleasantly surprised with these kind of things. We are very fortunate to have that kid in our team uh, because he. Uh, I don't know what he can't do, I, you know. And I, I think, I think if 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 a move is in, on the horizon for him, it should be a bigger club. Italy, Italy would be a great spot for him, mainly because of his defensive um, abilities and and his his, you know, if you look at his skill set, uh, reading the game, uh, making tackles that matter. Uh, he, he has an engine. And one of the other things I would say is we we've known this since his youth days with the U.S. national team. He owns every single physical record that exists when it comes to any kind of, of endurance or, or um, you know, w when you look at some of the testing that they go through, it, you, you might, you might as well just evaluate everybody else because he's the one that is constantly at the top of the charts and it, and no one's close. So he's an engine, he's a machine. Uh, and, and, you know, I did say that I didn't think he was ready, but I think he's ready now. I think the world cup experience uh, especially if it continues uh, longer after the Netherlands game, uh, I, I think I'll be I'll, I won't be the only one you know singing his praises. He's very good, He's a very good player. Well, hopefully next time we speak, uh, both USA and England will be in the quarterfinals because that'll certainly make for some uh, interesting conversation ahead of those games. We should have another episode between 
now and then. But obviously, we'll see how uh, everyone gets on in the last 16 this weekend and into the start of next week. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. And as ever, if you follow our tips, please gamble responsibly. And the odds are correct at the time of recording. We will see you next week. And uh, yeah, let's hope our teams get through in the, into the last eight of the World Cup. Thanks for joining us. Should be fun.